Can you hear yourself? Come yeah. On. Get closer. <laughs> Have you got any words? Yeah. <laughs> Go on then. Is that good? Yeah. Shall we hear it? Yeah. When lockdown kind of first started, we kept it very strict. We just didn't see anyone. We didn't go anywhere. The children are here all the time and you're knackered. So it's like trying to get this energy to make new music and get new ideas is hard. Let's be on teams, Dad. I still want to be creative and I still want to have fun making music, but they're always here, so why not involve them? <laughs> I'll have some samples loaded in the DigiTact, and then I'll load like a kit up in here. Um, I really love the step sequencer in it because it reminded me of going back to, to making music on Fruity Loops, which is what I started on. Since I moved to Logic, I lost touch with just quick building of drums and it just took the energy out of it a lot for me. So this brought it back. Like this is just stuff for them to have fun with basically. And then I'll put like, you can change the tuning of each individual sound so they can just play around. And it's quite, it's quite intuitive. I get them to like do a jam session basically and then I just take bits out that, that worked. Maybe we can find little pieces in there that, that can turn into a track. They make me step out of my comfort zone in terms of genre or tempo. The tracks that we made exclusively together were in the 160s, which is a tempo I never go up to. And mine is really into drum and bass and jungle. So then we were just uh, making stuff a lot faster and making a lot of high energy stuff, which also isn't a lot of my, my normal music. And then Oscar brings in this whole new energy that he has, which is just crazy energy. He's really into like dark sounding stuff. I don't really know where that comes from, <laughs> but I love it. Every musician and producer wants to get to that point when they're in the studio and they can just turn their brain off and they're not thinking about who's going to listen to it, what DJ is going to play it. They can just turn their brain off and just create. But the kids, they don't have that at all. They don't think about who's listening to the music. They don't think about what it's going to do after it's made. They're just making it. Normally if I was doing a collaboration with someone, we'd have different ideas and we'd both have a certain kind of knowledge of the equipment and of what we're doing that we can kind of compartmentalise ourselves and we do this certain bit and you do this certain bit. But with them, they just want to try everything. So it's just letting them go free and letting yourself take a step back and not having to be in control of everything. I think this year with 
with George Floyd's death and everything that that led to, with um, everyone being stuck inside and feeling super restricted with COVID, there was a high intensity of charged feelings that leaked out in multiple ways. It made me look at the way black people were represented in electronic music. Growing up as a young boy from London, I never knew house and techno was black music at all. That was just white European music to me. And I stayed away from it because it just, it just didn't connect with me at all. I think it's really important to have a representation of black people within dance music and to let people know that, yes, we are grime, yes, we are jungle, yes, we are rap, but we're also house, we're also techno. We're, we're, we are dance music. Trying to teach my children the gaps that I had in my musical knowledge as a child is, is important to me. It's something that I'm personally still learning myself and kind of learning together with them and trying to share the information of who the creators of this music were and where this sound came from and why it sounds like this.